Hi friends. Welcome to the new, <laughs> the new location of Rhubarb Patch Studio. Um, my name is Leah Noel. This is my first floss tube this year in 2024. Um, it's already February though, early February. Um, and it's been several months since I made an update and that's because I moved across the country. I mean, not across the country, but it was like six to seven hours driving distance from where we lived previously. So um, it was significant enough. And um, I won't talk about that right now, but I think at the end of this update video, I might give more details about that just for those of you who've been with me for a long time and who are just interested in hearing about that kind of stuff. And um, for now, I'll just say um, it's nice to be here. It's nice to interact with you again. And um, I hope all of you are well. So I, um, I have a big pile of stuff here. We're in my new kitchen, if I have not mentioned that already. Um, this is, um, we're just, we're, we're going to test things out, you know, um, between now and when I get a more permanent floss tube space, um, I'm not really sure where is going to be the best place to film videos. And so bear with me as we, as we test things like that. Um, so anyway, I have kind of a pile of things to show you. I have been stitching in the last few months. Um, let's see, I filmed an update at the end of September, I believe. And at that time I was getting ready to move. And um, I had, that's my cat Dudley. Dudley's still um, himself. <laughs> he might make an appearance. Um, So at the time that I was getting ready to move, I had set aside like 10, 10 or 12 projects uh, in a single tote that I could pull from and work on as I, as I wished um, during the move. I knew that it would take some time for me to get settled in the new house and um, to have access to my projects. And that was true. Um, it was also true that the move was a little bit um, overwhelming to me, and so there was a solid stretch of um, four, four weeks that I did not stitch, not even once. Um, and since that time, um, I've been slowly getting more into stitching um, to the, you know, to the extent that I was stitching before all of this. So um, so anyway, there's not as many whips as you might expect um, after being gone for so many months, but that's okay. Um, recently, I've been stitching on fewer, fewer projects, but for a longer time, I guess, um, which is also less typical of the things you might see on this uh, floss tube channel and from me as a stitcher, but um, that is what is bringing me comfort lately. So I'm just going with that and I think that's a good thing. Let me show you some finishes. <laughs> I was actually able to finish a few things. Um, the first week in October, uh, I had some extra stitching time on my hands. It was um, just before we moved and I was determined to finish something. And this was one of the more um, manageable 
whips, I think, in my, in my stack of whips. And so I just hit it hard and I got it finished. And this is the MLK Sampler by Stone Street Stitchworks. This was, um, this was available um, back in, I think, 2020. I think, um, I think the designer had this available as a free chart um, when you donated to um, one of the Black Lives Matter causes and um, and it might be available on her website now, um, but I'm really not sure. I have not looked. Um, I stitched this on 32 count Moon Glow Linen by Picture This Plus. And you know what? since I moved, I just kind of lost all my supplies. So I don't have a board to put behind this, but okay. What's gonna be good here? So the text says, the time is always right to do what is right. And you'll notice that my um, my finish looks different than the mock the mock up. So Stone Street Stitchworks designs are generally um, more antique looking, um, kind of folks arty, and I really love the um, aesthetic of that. But the muted colors are just not really they're not a, as much my style, so, um, uh, this was during lockdown as well, so I had to pull from what was in my stash at the time, and I had this bright yellow fabric, um, it's getting a little blown out in this lighting, but the, the fabric is pretty bright yellow, um, I had all the DNCs, um, in my own collection, so I just kind of pulled what I thought would be nice. I wanted to go with some, um, I wanted to go with primary colors, uh, with pops of green. So that's what I did, and I thought that this would be a nice thing to put in my son's, um, bedroom or something, because his favorite color is yellow, like this bright, um, uh, bright yellow. So I stitched this uh, while thinking of him, and um, I did not stitch the border. I typically leave borders off if they're super repetitive. It's also easier to frame things when you don't have a straight border, because um, when you have a super stick straight border, and then you try to frame it, it's sometimes uh, uh, hard to get it to look exactly straight. So it's just one of the reasons that I leave them off, but. <laughs> the next finish Finish. This is my first finish of 2024. Seashell Treasures. It's a Dimensions Gold Petite. And I stitched this for my mother in law. Um, but I don't think that we're actually going to gift it to her. I think. Um, we're just going to keep it here and um, so sort of I, I kind of made this for my husband and this is how it turned out nothing is iron today just FYI I don't even know where my iron is after moving um, we're still trying to unpack a lot of things and um, find spaces for everything and 
figure out how we're going to live in this space, um, how to make this space work for us. And um, one of the side effects is that I don't know where some of my things are. Um, and the iron is one of those things. I know where my ironing board is. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy with how this turned out. I just kind of freehanded um, her name at the bottom and that's it. So I'm not sure how I'm going to frame this, um, but that will get done at some point. For now, my husband likes it. Um, and the third finish um, is a little bit of a cheat finish because it's not it's not a complete finish, but it's a partial finish. <clears throat> I've been working on Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. And I'm only stitching, uh, where is it? I'm only st stitching six of the, I'm only stitching six of these blocks and I've already stitched the top. I'm not stitching this one, this one, this one, or this one. And I'm also kind of rearranging the ones that are left. So, um, <clears throat> but this is the block that I, was working on and finished uh, last month. And I'm stitching this on a 16 count Haven by Picture This Plus. This is a discontinued color. Sorry. Um, I can already tell the color is not going to come out correctly on the camera. So, um, right here is my partial finish. So this is already finished. And this is the block. This is the block that I finished. Um, and I changed the cat to look like my cat Dudley. Um, Dudley is a Berman. And let's see what else. I made, I made a an error. Actually, I made a couple errors on this block. Um, first one is that the grass is supposed to be two colors. It's supposed to be darker, like from on the bottom. You can't see in the model photo or I would show you, but um, it's supposed to be like a, a richer green down at the bottom. And I'm kind of bummed that I did not do that I think it would have added a little bit more dimension to this block, but I'm not going to pick out what I have um, and I'm not going to stitch over it. I'm just calling it done. I also left off all the back stitching on these pumpkins. Um, for one thing, it's hard to see where the back stitching is. And um, for another thing, I just don't, I just don't care enough about, <laughs> about it uh to to add it i just wanted to be done with this block um i switched up the colors because my fabric is so bright um it's such a cool color and the the design is charted for um warmer tones you can see it's on like a, a browner fabric it's um i'm trying to see uh it's Charted for Sand Dune from Lakeside Linens and um, NPI Silks. But I'm just using the DMC. Um, I'm just using the DMC conversion 
and um, where it makes sense to me, I'm switching out the colors. So the brick house, um, I actually modified those colors. I modified the roof colors, the two roof colors. Um, I made a counting error in the porch, but I just went with it. And you wouldn't be able to tell unless you knew the pattern really well. And we're looking for it. So I'm liking how this is going. And um, this is currently, this is the only um, project that I have that's like good for the car. And when I'm in the car, I usually work on these borders. So um, every now and then uh, my husband and I will go for a drive and he'll let me stitch. So, so that's also been, um, I told you it's kind of a cheat finish and that's because I am, I counted it, I counted the Automat Hawker and Hollow, the whole chart as one start, but I'm not counting each block as a start. <laughs> so basically like, I don't know if you've ever played a video game or a board game and you find a cheat code to, um, to get you bonuses that you don't actually have to work hard for, um, or perks or whatever. That's kind of how I feel about um, counting each block as a finish. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a cheat code to feel like I'm more accomplished than I actually am. <laughs> so, okay. Um. All right, so now, um, now I'll get into my whips. I didn't count how many I have in front of me here. It's, it's not the most, it's not the most ever. Um, but they're just not gonna be in any specific order. That's kind of what I uh, was stalling on. Okay, so Scarlet House, this is Strawberry House by the Scarlet House. Um, this is meant to be a wedding gift for a friend. Uh, I'm going to attend this friend's wedding in April, and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I'm actually, I'm very excited about it. Um, Dudley's meowing. Okay, oh, let's get rid of this string here. So I just, uh, I stopped. Sometimes I do this to, um, to help me stay motivated when I pick this back up. I'll just stop in the middle of a monotonous task. Like this, all this white, is super monotonous, just, you know, white, just back, it's just all fill in. And I struggle with enjoying filling, filling in large blocks of color. And so sometimes I will just stop in the middle of filling it in so that when I pick it up, I have to finish that task and then I can pick whatever color I want to stitch next. And that can be a good way to motivate me to work on something that I want to work on that I, you know, want to have done and I think is beautiful, but the actual stitching, like the fill-in stitching or the, whatever I find is difficult on that pattern, it, it just, it just helps. So this is 36 count, this is 36 count petite four. Linen by, uh, it's Wabi Sabi Linen. So that is Kitten Stitcher's Linen. I believe her son Graham uh, dyes fabrics for Wabi Sabi Linens. And I have not seen this color come up again. 
Uh, if I do, if I ever see this color come up again, I will buy more of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because look how amazing it is on for the white and the reds. I just, I'm really liking how this is coming out. I'm not using called for, okay, yes. Um, I put, I put my friend's my friend's initial and um, his fiance's initial, and in the door here I put the year uh, twenty four. Uh, yeah, very excited. I'm not using all of the called for, only some of the called for flosses. Next. Jingle Bells Christmas Tree Farm. This is a gift for my middle sister. She picked it out. She said she wants it exactly like the cover photo, like the model. So this is stitched exactly as called for. Uh, I wanted to finish this last year. I, I really wanted to, and that did not happen because of the move. And I've picked this up a few times since moving, but I'm really not making a whole lot of progress. I have everything from here all the way up to here stitched, not including the beads. So there are beads here that I have to go in and do. Uh, I'm just on this top band now, and it's almost done. It is almost done. Um, where I am kind of struggling, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm struggling. I don't know why this is taking so long. It could just be a counting thing. These are pretty count heavy and uh, just with the stress of moving and moving in, uh, that could be why it's a little bit fatiguing to work on. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to unroll it for you because I just need this to stay. I, I just need to, I need to, I need this to stay where it is so that I can just pick it up and work on it at the drop of a hat. And, uh, you know, when inspiration strikes. Something I, think is maybe discouraging to me a little bit is that uh, these trees here, they're all stitched except where they're not stitched is supposed to be snow. And it didn't occur to me until I picked it up this year or I guess in the last couple months that I don't have open I don't have open stitches for where the, all the beads are supposed to go, and there's supposed to be a lot of beads there. Let's see here. Can you see that? There's supposed to be a lot of colorful beads on that first, you know, the, the tree that's in the forefront. And so, I looked in the um, the directions because the way these are the way the way the Victoria Sampler charts their stuff is they will do like you know a, a chart like that and then they give you this much text for all of the uh, instructions and they it's very clear. Like, it's very clear. They break it down band by band and they put, you know, little reference points so that you can find where the text instructions are. And, um, I just, 
it's charted it's charted for all of those um, stitches to be stitched with green but in the text instructions it says to look at the close-up and they do give you um, in the back they give you these close-up they give you these close-up instructions on all the specialty stitches and there is a close-up for that tree and on the close-up it shows where all the beads are supposed to go and all the different colors and so now I just don't know if I should if it's going to be okay that I just put the beads over the actual stitching or if I have to unpick that whole tree which I just can't see myself doing so so I think that's part of what's holding me up there hey Dudley yeah yeah okay um let me show this one so when i moved here uh, i just wanted simple simple stitching and one of the simpler projects that i have purely because it's just one color is arc of white um and not everything is one color, that's not what I meant. But all of these cobwebs and all the text down here is just one color white. And I was really feeling like monotone uh, projects when I moved here. And so I took this out and I had a goal to get the entire top half finished. And I did. So I'm stitching this on 32 count Cyprium linen by Picture This Plus. Sorry for the delay. Okay. <clears throat> now I took this partially out of my Q snap so that you could see. The whole top half is finished. Yay! <laughs> it's so pretty. So I'm stitching this with my friend Amy. Um, Amy loves toads. And hers is also on a brown fabric. Uh, hers is... Actually, she's the one who inspired me to change my fabric to something more woodsy. And I really love this. So all that back stitching is totally done. Look at that. So pretty. Uh, I am using the called for silk for the spider webs, and that's all using one strand of silk, even for the full crosses. And then on all of these leaves and seeds, uh, I'm using two over two. And I am using my own selection of flosses for these. And I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with this floss or if I'm going to choose something different. Uh, I don't know if I love the way it looks. Uh, in the camera, in the camera, it seems to look good. I'm not really sure what I should do. If you have an opinion, you can let me know in the comments. It's just got, it's highly variegated. And from like an orange to brown, you can kind of see. that one away from now so that one's that one's been nice to have just as like a 
when I'm feeling like I want to stitch with just one color, but I also feel like counting, uh, but not really stressing over the counting, um, that's been kind of the one I go to for that feeling. Uh, <clears throat> after watching Amy's uh, update, one of her, I don't, I don't remember which one, uh, I was inspired to take out Wilbur by Teresa Kogut uh, because she's also stitching on this one and um, he's so cute. This was actually a gift from my friend Debbie. Uh, we went to StitchCon together and she gave this to me. It was so nice. I'm stitching this on 36 count. 36 count fossil by Picture This Plus. <clears throat> okay, so with, there we go. With this uh, design, uh, I am color completing because of some troubles I'm having reading the chart. Um, the symbols are kind of similar to one another, at least when I just glance at the pattern, it's hard to differentiate between some of the symbols, like I really have to concentrate. So what I've done is I have uh, highlighted each symbol with a different highlighter color. And that's been helping me immensely. And uh, this is just gonna be the easiest way for me to accomplish this stitching is to do just color complete so that I don't lose track of where I am. And um, yeah. I picked this fabric because it reminds me of like a manure pit. <laughs> It's a, it's a nice brown. I do plan to put a web up here. Um, probably one of Charlotte's words. Not sure which one, probably some pig. I'm not sure yet. Next, uh, this was my only new start since I saw you last. This is called Words of Praise. No, no, no. This is called Light Unto My Path by Words of Praise. It's a very old pattern. It, the, the year on it is 1986. And I believe this is just how it was distributed at that time. It is a uh, photocopy, but um, I have reason to believe that this is just the way that it was distributed. I got this from kittenstitcher.com and I don't know if she does this or if it comes this way, but the the chart is all hand drawn and the color key is just names of of colors like blue gray cream gold but no no um no dyer or um or anything so it came with a list of dmc numbers uh with the names attached like this uh, and I don't know if this is something that Teresa does. Uh, Teresa Bennett is the owner, um, the owner of the Kitten Stitcher store. I don't know if she does this or if, or if it came this way in the '80s. I really don't know. Okay. When I saw this pattern, I was not picturing it to be like uh, antique looking. Actually, I 
I just imagined it to be warmer. I don't know, just different, just different. And I was inspired by this piece of fabric that I had. Um, what is this called? I think it's called Glory. It's 32 count Glory Lugana by Pictureless Plus. And I had a piece that was big enough for two small samplers, and both of them are from, both of them are by Words of Praise. Um, you've seen this finish already, but um, this this is a finish, and this is something you've already seen. This is not what I worked on, but um, this was another very similar, very similar um, design or pattern to this, like on a photocopy, black and white, um, you know, beigey, brownie colors. Um, charted for you know just antique looking colors and I just decided nope it looks like this in my head and so I I just picked some colors and was very inspired by this fabric and um, it made me think of a Bahamas kind of a vibe or no not Bahamas Bermuda not that it really matters I haven't been to either location so uh, I had the whole second half of this fabric and that is what inspired these colors for this one. So this was my new start. Um, I started it at the end of 2023, so I still have no starts this year, technically. Uh, I'm not positive if I like this brown here, so I might pick that out and either go with something different or leave it open. But I want these two samplers to be kind of a companion piece and uh, companion pieces. And so I used all of the all of the colors in this are also in the other one. The text says, thy word is a lamp unto my path and a light, no, oh, sorry. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, and I just really think it's a very sweet looking sampler, so. Um, Not sure. I don't have any plans for this really. It's just like a just because stitch and and therefore I don't know when you'll see it again. That's where it is now. I think that Kitten Stitcher still has both of those um, samplers by Words of Praise available on her website. This, okay, this one is called Portuguese Bird Sampler by Barbara Anna Designs. I'm doing a total color conversion just based on my own color preferences and um, what, this, what this design makes me think of, like more tropical colors. Um, <laughs> it's pretty bright. Look at that. Okay. Uh, there. That kind of eliminates the, the shadows a little bit. Okay, so since you saw this last, I don't know what I've done. I think I've probably worked on getting this girl on the horse uh, done and I probably started filling this in, probably filled in this a little bit more. Uh, that's kind of what I've been focusing on. So I am enjoying how this is going. I stitched this in hand. Did I say it's 32 count? 
Nope, it's 36 count. Okay. What is this? 36 count lilac something by Lakeside Linens. It's not easy to find. It's a very pretty light, light purple. And all of the flosses are color in cotton. Um, I just, I went with the spirit of the original design. You know, it's like the spirit of the original design, but I just kind of brightened everything. And I'll probably talk about it more as I work on it more, but I ha I took kind of a break. I, I took a break from this. I was stitching on it quite a bit before we moved all last year. This was one of my favorite things to pick up. It is a massive, it is a massive design. I don't have the dimensions in front of me right now, but it's it's over 300 stitches tall. Um, and, and whew. So anyway, I haven't stitched on that in quite a while, but I did stitch on it since I showed you last, so. Here's that. Next one, Pavan for These Times by Long Dog Samplers. I'm stitching with the I'm stitching this with my friend Jenny. Long Dog Stitcher, or formerly known as Long Dog Stitcher. I don't know. She'll always be Long Dog Stitcher in my heart. So, and in many of yours, I know. I, the lines here show where the page breaks are. And what Jenny and I are doing is we are stitching one page at a time together. And when we both finish that page, then we move on to the next page. So that's been super fun to do, very motivating. Uh, I was very in the mood to stitch this uh, uh, last month. And <clears throat> I just, I knocked out my page in like uh, a week or so. And so now we are um, six pages finished. Six pages are complete. Uh, the last, this is the last page that I stitched right here. I am not doing the border, the sawtooth border. Uh, I just don't have it in me to do that. It's too, too monotonous, too repetitive. Uh, you can see here, there's one solid line and then there's sawtooth border. And it's beautiful that way, uh, but I'm just not going to do it. I just can't, I just can't bring myself to do it. This is 40 count mystery linen by Color and Cotton. It's very light, light blue. The floss that I'm using is Silks For You PR 132. Um, very, very uh, watery. And I love it. If you're hesitant to do like a, um, if you're hesitant to use a variegated floss for a long dog or other, you know, some other monochrome, monochromatic design, uh, I would encourage you to go for it anyways and to not care where your colors fall because that's kind of the magic of it. And when it's all together like this, when it's all together, you, it's just you don't, your eye doesn't pick up if there's like a dark spot next to a light spot that, you know, wouldn't normally be there or something. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm encouraging you to let go. Just let go of um, 
it's a good practice, you know, like letting go of the control of where the color lands uh, for people like us who uh, who sometimes care about about that kind of thing, like controlling uh, how things play out. This is a really safe space for you to just let go of that control. That's, that's what I tell myself anyway. Okay, next thing, I don't have, I don't have a cover photo uh, because it's a digital pattern, but it's called Good Night's Kiss by, uh, Uncanny Kari. I think, Uncanny Kari Designs. And the cover photo is a lot brighter. It's like a hot pink and hot blue. And I selected colors based on uh, my husband's cousin's engagement photo. And it's just more natural looking more earth tones with a pop of color and I think it's gonna I think it's good. This is a 36 count some kind of um R, &R. I believe I bought this for Rosewood Manors. Um whatever Rosewood Manor is called for whatever that fabric is um i think this is it because i bought that thinking i would use it for that pattern and i didn't i didn't didn't care for that but it's working great for this so there's that okay this next one again i don't have a cover photo because it's a digital pattern uh, i got it on etsy but it is called Anne Woodall 1847 and who's the designer? Um, Mountain Stitches, Stony Mountain Stitches, I think. I am stitching this on 32 count. Okay, how can I do this? 32 count. Stone, stone something. Stone something by, or maybe just stone, I'm not sure. By Roxy, Roxy Flasco. See. This flower has something like 800 stitches in it. It is so big, like it's very large. My... This is the outline of one of the roses, um, so I'm excited to get to that. Um, okay. So I, I first fell in love with this design after watching Megan, Wide-Eyed Stitcher, uh, work on hers. And when I, <clears throat> when, I, when I realized that I spent every video hoping that she would bring out Anne Woodall, I thought to myself, you know, you really should maybe just go and buy that pattern and stitch it for yourself so that you can see it more often. And so I did that. And um, so anyway, I knew I knew from listening to her videos that there were some issues with like um, the flosses not not um, not totally matching up with the uh, with the model 
photo and so before I even started stitching I sat down with my flosses and I decided what I wanted to do and I kind of um, revised some of the some of the flosses to my own taste and to this fabric that I chose because it's designed for like a very a very bright neutral cream color I think so it's very stitch heavy it doesn't look as stitch heavy as it is okay last whip for today is Virtue by La Dida. After I finished Pavan for these times, or the page, um, I was still in the mood for some more like um, single floss colors. And I know you're looking at this and you're like, that's not single floss. That's true. But let me show you my progress here. So um, this is my progress and you'll see like this brick house, a lot of this is just like, I just sat and did the mortar and the windows are all one color, the door one color, the bricks one color. Um, you know, this border is multiple colors, but it's a very, uh, it's, it's a pattern that doesn't, vary so you can just sit there and mindlessly stitch but it's not totally mindless you know like it's it's still you have to count do you get what i'm saying <laughs> so i have put this is the only thing i've stitched on this month february and i think i've put like I don't know, 13 hours into it already. Because the last time you saw it, I was not this far. I think I had part of the door filled in, I had part of the window filled in, I had like one strand of floss in the bricks. I think the border went up to like here. So I've brought the border all the way over here. Um, most of that mortar is filled in. I am. Um, see, I did that, I did that here. I'm stitching this bottom line, which lines, a, a straight line to me, is the most boring thing I could ever stitch in my entire life. I, I don't know what it is about it, but it just bores me to tears. So, I have to, <laughs> I have to, um make it doable somehow and um so here i just stitched one direction this way and i just stopped mid mid row but that means when i come to pick it up i'll finish i'll finish the thread you know i'll finish coming down here crossing all my uh, x's and then and then i can choose anything else so it's like eat your broccoli first but but it's like if you start eating your broccoli and then you leave it for next time and then you have to finish eating your broccoli and then you can have a sweet. <sighs> this is on 40 Count Ale by Picture This Plus. And I'm only using two of the called for flosses, I believe. Um, this brown, nope. Maybe. This dark color for sure, and um, this ter terrapin. Otherwise, just pick my own colors. Okay. So those are all the whips that I have to show you today. And... Um, Um, so I know a lot of floss tubers do plans and I don't do plans, uh, generally speaking, because I don't, 
I don't know. Because I don't... Uh... Oh, Dudley wants to say hi. Okay, here's Dudley. I know. Okay. This is maybe not a good idea. Ugh. Okay. He's he's an old man. Okay. Um Okay, plans. Yeah, I don't I don't really do a whole lot of plans. Um, I might do goals, like long-term goals, and usually how I break up those goals, um, it's it's usually pretty loose. Like I can't tell myself you must stitch on this one thing because I just will rebel against myself even though I want the I like I want to achieve the goal. <laughs> I want to achieve the goal, but I don't want to be told what to do, including by myself. So um it's, you know, it's an internal conflict, so I don't do plans. That's a long way of saying I just don't do plans. So um, as far as like my costume filming goes, I don't know about that either. Um, I mentioned earlier that I am not in my, um, I'm not in my permanent space, so I'm not sure how often I'm going to uh, be able to stitch or that, I mean, um, film or that I'll want to film, um, you know, with just in the space. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, so the best thing to do, if you want to see more of my um, updates, the best thing to do, honestly, would just be to subscribe and to um, hit the notification bell because I can't tell you when to expect my next update video. So, um, for now, I think I'm going to say um, that the next, this next segment will be a little bit of a life update for those of you who are interested and um, who have been with me for a while or, you know, maybe you're just with me for the first time or you know, and you just want to get to know me a little bit more, <laughs> whatever your reasons are, you can stick around for that. But if you were just here for the stitching, then I'll just say thanks for stopping by. And I hope you stop by again and leave a comment to let me know that you're here and um, take care. So um, let me pick something up off the floor quick. All right. So, life update, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be too detailed, honestly. Um, so we, we moved in October, and um, we, we were living. We are still in the Upper Midwest. And uh, we knew last year, like early-ish last year, we kind of were feeling like um, we were feeling like we wanted to move to be closer to family. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we've been moving around the country for the last... 18 years and you know it there's been pros and cons um one of the pros is obviously like you get to go places and see things and you experience new things that you wouldn't otherwise experience and you meet people from all over the world really uh at least we did and uh and so that was really great. But last year, uh, it was it was quite a year for us. Uh, last two years really were interesting years. And so we knew we were kind of moving in this direction, like emotionally. Like we were like, okay, we're ready. We think we've outgrown 
the house. We feel like we've explored all there is to explore. We've, you know, reached out as much as we can to, um, to people. Um, we still felt like we were not, we didn't really have the most support uh, where we were um, before. We had some, uh, you know, but not, not really enough. So we knew that it was kind of on our horizon. And we, we went on a big trip to Scotland and Ireland at the end of July. I'm so thankful that, that my husband convinced me to just put it in the books, you know, just, just put it in the schedule, you know, uh, way ahead of time. Because had we not done that, I mean, we wouldn't have gone and it just never would have happened. And that was really, um, it was so good. I, I know I haven't, I, I don't, I don't think I talked about it a whole lot. Um, because since coming back from that trip, it's been like, uh, just crazy. I don't know. I feel like so much has been going on. Um, so When, like, when we came back from that trip, we were like, okay, the year's almost over. At least um, moving season is almost over because winters in the upper Midwest, nobody, nobody tries to move in the winter in the upper Midwest. Like you really only move in the winter if you have to. And so we had a deadline. We, had, we set a deadline for when we wanted to move. And when, like, the latest that we were willing to, um, the latest that we were willing to physically move, the latest that we were willing to list our house for sale and sell our own house and, um, and all of that. And so it came down to, um, long story short, we found we found this house on the very last day. Um, it was the very last house that we looked at. It was the only house that we were really, we really felt um, like we, there was nothing, there was nothing really wrong with it at all. I mean, in our, like that we were comfortable with everything. What am I trying to say? very scattered. Um, so it was like last moment, like, okay, we found, we found a house at the last moment that we said was going to be acceptable to us. And so from then, from there, we, we made the offer. It was accepted. We selected a closing date and then we had to list our house for sale and find a buyer for that and accept the offer and wait for that closing. So it was very tense, very, um, you know, high, high anxiety, <laughs> you know, time for, for me. And, uh, it all worked out and I'm so thankful and we made it and we moved in October. <sighs> Um, you know, I'll spare you more details than that, uh, but it was just, it was a lot. It was overwhelming for me, um, and when I get overwhelmed like that, I just kind of retreat a little bit, and so that's why you haven't really seen me around on Frosttube or on Instagram. I do plan to get back to Instagram, um, at some point, but I... I just, I just haven't been um, feeling like I can engage socially, uh, and and that's okay. I just, it'll, I'll come around. It'll, it'll be better, and um, we'll get there. And so this new house, um, this new house that we're that we're in. We're so thankful for um, 
because the neighborhood is really great for Otto. Um, Otto is our son, he's, um, he's eight. And there's kids his age right next door. Uh, and when the weather is nice, there's just a group of kids outside. We didn't have that in our last house. Uh, I feel like, I feel like Otto really needed it. And so, you know, we feel, we feel, um, really thankful that, uh, that he has that now. And, uh, he sees, he sees his neighbor friends uh, multiple times a week. You know, they'll come over here or he'll go over there. And the move was pretty tough for him as well. Uh, just transitions can be challenging and uh, he's he's an emotional kid. And um, so, you know, that didn't make it any easier for good old mom. Um, but we 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 just we felt confident that it needed to happen and um that there's just more resources for him here at his new school and um that there there can just be more accommodations for the things that he needs um in school and so that's been a positive thing um things are just slowly getting better and better as we get settled into this new place and we plan to be here until um until he graduates from high school at least so so yeah we have some time to get comfortable and let's see i left my job uh and that's okay it was causing me great amounts of stress and anxiety and I won't get into that, but I do not miss my job. I am kind of in between career goals at the moment, and um, and that's okay. Um, that's okay for now. Um, my husband has the same job. His job is a lot more flexible um, because he he lives at work when he's working and then he lives at home when he's not working. And so as long as he can commute to work, um, like he can live anywhere in the country, really. So that hasn't changed. Um, and the other thing is that this new house, we weren't looking for a house with a mother-in-law suite, but this house has a mother-in-law suite. And at the same time that we moved, my sister needed a place to live. Um, she was also between housing situations. Um, and she wasn't sure where she was gonna live next because, um, you know, variables, life variables. And one of those variables being my family, you know, me and my husband and Otto, um, not knowing where we were gonna settle down. And so the market is crazy, like the real estate market right now, it's totally crazy. So my sister's living with us. <laughs> Yay! Uh, that's been really great. It's been so nice to just get that family time. Um, we were really missing it and I was craving it. And um, so that's been really nice she um she has her own apartment basically um because this house was literally built for the previous owner's mother to live with them and um so you know that part is great uh but also that's where my stitching like that's where that's where rhubarb patch studio is going to be <laughs> long term is in that um is in that mother-in-law suite and until that time there really is no place like designated for me i don't even really have an office space um i mean i do actually i do but it's in the corner of um my husband's working space uh, his home working space 
Um, so, um, yeah, there's good things on the horizon, but there's good things here now. And yeah, just working on, just, just working on settling in, getting, getting everything to feel a more, mm, I don't know. I don't know what I'm working for. I just, it needs to just be calmer working on getting everything to feel calmer and more stable and just more, just more permanent. Uh, let's see. Last update, I guess. Um, did I bring my rhubarb? <laughs> no, I didn't bring my rhubarb. Uh, it didn't make it. It just was too many things to do in too little time. And, um, and also like the weather plays a huge part in that, uh, because the, really the best time to transplant rhubarb is when they are dormant. So I have, um, maybe three rhubarb suppliers in this area. And I think I'm going to get some little rhubarb plants this spring. And I'm considering doing like a, I don't know, like not a floss tube, but like a garden segment where I just talk about rhubarb. <laughs> because I love rhubarb. Um, and yeah, thinking about that. I don't know if anyone would be interested, like beyond two people, but. Um, hmm. Anything else? I don't know. I hope that everyone else has been doing all right. Um, you know, part part of my anxiety with uh, not filming uh, just has been the whole state of the world, I guess, um, that brings me anxiety. And um, yeah. I can't talk about that, but um, anyway, that doesn't change the fact that I hope that if you're watching this and you actually made it this far, you can hear me say that I really, I truly hope that you're doing well and that you're safe and um, that you're stitching as much as you want to and that you can. And um, I'm not sure when my next video will be, but um, if you've been patient with me this far, um, I'm just so thankful for you and um, hope that you'll you'll continue to stop by and spend time with me from from time to time. Um, okay, well, I think let's just cut this off here and then I will um, get it edited and posted uh, toot sweet and not sure when I'll be back. I will, I think I'll aim for once a month. Like that's kind of a goal, loose goal that I have. But like I said, I really don't know um, if, if I'll be able to keep up with that. But I think, you know, once a month was working really well for me last year. And, um, and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, okay, that's enough rambling. <laughs> I'm out of practice. It's really hard to cut off these videos. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.